for the session on building resilient global value chains, advancing inclusion and integration of all. I now request session moderator, Ms. Malika Srinivasan, Chairman and Managing Director, Tractors and Farm Equipment Limited, to take over. Over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all of you to this plenary on building resilient global value chains, advancing inclusion and integration of all. It's with, it's with great pleasure that uh, we have with us uh, a guest, guest of honor, the Honorable uh, Minister, Mr. Piyush Goyal, Minister for Commerce and Industry, Textiles, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. As an ardent devotee and, and a proponent of free and inclusive global trade, he has led India's external engagement with great dexterity that has resulted in enhanced trade flows, both in terms of imports and exports. He has also redefined India's strategies on free trade agreements and finalized FTAs with UAE and Australia in record time with several others under discussion. His guidance will be invaluable for the discussions today. So welcome to this session. And I'd also like to add that the minister has expressed his keenness to have a more interactive session. And thank you for that. So I'll request all our panelists and to, to stick to our respective time allotted so that we can and encourage the participants here to raise, uh, to raise their questions uh, with the minister. So a little change of format, but I think a more interesting, interesting change. So, so thank you. Thank you for that. We're also privileged to have with us Sri Somprakash, Minister of State um, for Commerce and Industry, who brings to his portfolio decades of rich experience in policy formulation and administration, having been a member of the coveted Indian Administrative Service for over three decades. So we look forward to your experienced insights in today's deliberations. And I thank all the other distinguished speakers at this plenary for your kind participation. Developments in global trade have dominated headlines over the last few years and become an increasingly key imperative for governments and businesses all over the world to focus on, given that global value chains have played a key role in stimulating economic growth, boosting investments, creating jobs, and building further the respective strength of each participating economy. Despite the widely reported rise in protectionism and bilateral trade tensions, Global trade of goods and services reached a record level of over $30 trillion in 2022, signaling resilient global demand. Trade in services has proven to be particularly resilient and posted an increase of 15% year on year in 2022, um, as compared to a 10% increase in global goods trade in the same period. Investments have rebounded too post the pandemic. Governments around the world are being proactive in reshaping supply chains by offering attractive investment schemes for investors. Bilateral trade tensions among major trading blocks have intensified, leading to an imposition of rising tariffs and sanctions. The outbreak of the recent military conflict led to a variety of restrictive measures which significantly impacted global supply chains. We are now at a point where formal trade restrictions are estimated to impact $1.4 trillion of trade among G20 countries. Respect restrictive trade and investment policies have also impacted FDI activity. And these factors give rise to expectations that there is a significant shift in trade mix likely. Global undercurrents have also had second order effects leading to disrupted production, higher prices for consumers, limited consumer choices, misallocation of resources, and loss of jobs. Hence, there is indeed a pressing need for us to address the resilience across the ecosystem. In the midst of all this, it's nice to note that Asia has emerged as a leading light globally. While FDI inflows into developed economies dropped, there were record inflows into emerging economies in Asia. Asia's share of global FDI inflows has seen a consistent increase, capturing 40% of global FDI inflows in 2022, underscoring the reliance, the resilience, pardon, underscoring the resilience of Asian nations. 2022 saw India become one of the fastest growing countries in the world, 
and complete a successful emergence out of a pandemic-induced slowdown. In 22, India's real GDP grew at 6.9%, proving that a large country with a democratic pluralistic system can achieve significant economic growth and development for its people. In parallel to its surging economy, many eyes are on India's population growth as well. One estimate would put India's population at, at estimated 1.47 billion at the end of 22 as already 5 million in excess of China's. And in any case, certainly expected to be the most populous into 2023. India's ambitious foray into the global economy with its human capital and entrepreneurship has underlined its leadership among the emerging and developing economies. The global focus on the India growth story is indicative of its growing importance in accelerating international development and cooperation and strengthening multilateralism. India has historically been an active leader and participant in the G20 processes on the Sherpas and finance tracks. Its support for global cooperation, inclusive development, economic stability and sustainable growth is in line with its national goals as well as the values espoused by other leaders of the G20. As one of the most diverse nations in the world, India appreciates that inclusivity is the key to growth and will play a strong role in driving resilience, sustainability, digitization, and enhancing the services trade, to name a few of the issues. The past versions of the B20 have highlighted the importance of decisive policymaking in driving growth, inclusivity, and sustainability. They were able to advocate practical recommendations and support key policies in the face of the global pandemic and military conflicts. And in this context, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize the good work done by our immediate predecessors, Italy and Indonesia, in, in developing comprehensive recommendations and defining aspirational targets. The B20 Italy team, in the face of declining international trade volume and plummeting FDI flow caused by the pandemic, made strides on strengthening international cooperation, preparing for future global emergencies, addressing inequalities, and promoting sustainable development. They recognize the importance of driving impact through measurable, actionable metrics, and were trendsetters in introducing KPIs and targets for 2024 with their recommendations. The B20 Indonesia team works through a challenging global economic landscape, coupled with military conflict in Europe, driving forward the crucial role of trade and investment in supporting global economic recovery and resiliency. They highlighted the necessity of leveraging innovation and technology to multiply the benefits from trade and investment and committed to an inclusive, close-looped pledge empowering MSMEs and women-led businesses. We would like to continue reinforcing some of the consistent themes that past B20s have driven forward to name a few, inclusiveness and resilience of value chains, growing importance of sustainability, and facilitating easier cross-border trade with the use of technology. Keeping this in mind, there are four broad themes um, that are being proposed for discussion with task force and members, with task force and members, and for consideration. Fostering resilience and sustainability. In recent times, the pandemic, geopolitical conflicts, breakthroughs in vaccines, and the ongoing recovery have highlighted that building resilience and sustainability is a key priority. The pandemic wiped out $8.5 trillion of output from the market over the two years following its onset, and the global economic impact of the Russia-Ukraine conflict is expected to be around $2.8 trillion by the end of this year. It brings into focus the need for global coordination of crisis mitigation in a way that considers different starting points of each country. Globally, services trade, and this is our second theme, advancing the services trade to the next frontier. Globally, services trade contributes significantly to the overall trade volume, but numbers have been rising every year. Given the emergence of services as a key enabling backbone of manufacturing, and other industries as well, 
there is an opportunity for significant advancement. Of the overall value of global trade, goods contributed nearly $25 trillion or 75%, while services contributed $7 trillion or, 20, or 25, sorry, 75, I should have gone with first. More difficult to track, it surely is, the digitally delivered services, and so we can say that the numbers are perhaps underrepresented. The service value added per manufacturing sector today it stands at between 28 and 30 percent. And therefore, services are becoming a key enabling backbone for manufacturing. Services trade needs to align with manufacturing and easier movement of services across borders facilitated. Earlier references were made during the proceedings today on the use of uh, technology in, in trade, and I'll just try to build a little bit on it. Trade and businesses are seeing a shift towards digitization and global e-commerce. Digitally delivered services went up from 52% of services to over 65% in 2022. Technology is the fastest growing motive for greenfield FDIs. Global greenfield FDI across all sectors in 2021, following a decline in 2020, increased 18.1%. But by comparison, the FDI projects in software and IT services increased 29.3%. Technology can play a pioneering role in advancing trade to its next frontier on multiple fronts. Through improvements in digital infrastructure and through pioneering use of Industry 4.0 tools in trade, it can enable trade to become more efficient, resilient, and inclusive. Promoting inclusivity across the ecosystem, there were a number of references to this even in our opening session today. Despite the rising global trade, we observe that small, some groups are still structurally disadvantaged from participating in global trade. Today, MSMEs represent 90% of businesses and more than half of employment and some economies contributing up to 40% of national income. But 70% of women-owned MSMEs remain currently underserved by financial institutions. Access to finance is the primary barrier. Essentially, in emerging and developing countries, 131 million firms, 41% of the formal MSMEs in developing countries have unmet financial needs of $5 trillion annually. There is an opportunity to improve financial access for MSMEs and women by lowering regulatory burden and skill building. LDCs have not been able to keep pace with the growth witnessed elsewhere. GVC participation is therefore not merely a question of an international trade environment that is free, open, and inclusive. Inclusive GVC participation needs to go beyond this to look at capabilities within countries and how to build and strengthen these capabilities. In the last three years, the global trade and investment landscape has faced many unforeseen challenges. India, as chair of this year's B20, is committed to working constructively to emerge stronger out of any eventuality. We must continue to build on the work done by the past B20 committees and collectively drive effective and meaningful outcomes as seen by the people of the B20 and eyes of the world that are upon us. Thank you all for this opportunity.